blow the field away. Back in Hayward Field as we're getting close to the end of the NCAA Outdoor Track and Field Championships. Next event on the track is the men's 5,000 meters. Henry Rono with the collegiate record, Sydney Marie with the meet record. And Lawi Lalang of the University of, or uh, Ar of Arizona, I should say. One of the favorites here. Trains in the altitude of Flagstaff. 12, or excuse me, I should say 24 original competitors, two have scratched. So a field of 22 for this final. Well, there's going to be several athletes, I think, eventually stand out here, Dwight. The man with the white bandana and the yellow top from northern Arizona striding out there, not pushing the pace right now. They're kind of looking around at each other as if to say, do you want to take it? Uh, how fast is this going to be? Is Diego Estrada, and he has the fastest time this collegiate season by a collegian. 13 minutes and 15 seconds, uh, which if you've ever run a 5K, folks, imagine that. 13 minutes plus the guy covers a 5K. But right now, that time is not a danger. <laughs> We're seeing another tactical, slow race. Because of rounds for many of these things in the end of a long season, many athletes don't want to push it late in the season. And if they can kick well, and many being the best in their conference, they're confident in their kicks. They tend to lay back on long races and just maybe kick the last half or the last quarter of the race. Lowey Lalang from Arizona trains at Tucson. Diego Estrada from Northern Arizona. He's at Flagstaff. That's quite a bit higher than Tucson. It still is a huge advantage to be living and training at altitude and then coming down to very close to sea level here in Eugene. Lalang is an amazing story. The guy in the lead, Coach James Lee of Arizona. He worked with Bernard Lagat and Lalang's brother, Boaz Lalang, who was a world championship medalist at 800 meters. The story goes back now three or four plus years. And he went over to visit Boaz, talk about his training and so forth, and he, he gave him his workouts. And while there, they went to a race. And it was a 1,500 meter race in the Rift Valley, where most of the great runners in Kenya come from. And it was the younger brother of Boaz Lalang, Lawi. And he ran three minutes and 59 seconds for 1,500 meters at altitude. And he got talking with him about, what do you do for workouts? And he said, I go out and run about an hour a day, you know, five, six days a week. I don't keep track of miles. I don't kind of off that. So he comes back and keeps in touch. And a year later, after keeping in touch with him and watching and seeing that he had a love for the sport, James Lee says, why don't you come to the University of Arkansas? I'll give you a scholarship. Long story short, he wound up coming to school, as you see some of his stats here of what he's accomplished. And within a month of being at school, he ran a 359 mile. Unbelievable stuff. I've never heard of anything happening that quickly. He's going for his sixth NCAA championship on a track, either indoors or outdoors, to go along with that cross country title that he won. It certainly doesn't hurt to be coached by James Lee and have Bernard Lagat as a training mate, even if it's just once a week. His coach has an interesting comment, James Lee, very subtle, and he says, you know, he's, he's got to learn to hold back a bit, which tells me he tries to kill himself in workouts a lot. Three minutes, 21 seconds for the first three laps. These guys are averaging about 66, 67 seconds per lap around this beautiful, beautiful facility here. So it's Lolly Lang and now Henry Lalay, who was second in the steeplechase yesterday after a nearly tragic fall in the water pit, the last water jump. More points potentially for Texas A&M, who would love to have a little cushion going into the, the final event, the 4 by 400 relay. Lowy has already won easily the 10,000 meters in this race, and Lalay in second place yesterday took second in the 3,000 meter steeplechase. So there might be a little bit of fatigue there, although the 10K race that Lalang ran was pretty easy the way they ran it. It was a relatively slow time. Yeah. 
So everybody in the field happy to follow Lavi Lalang's lead. And he had told us before the 10,000 meters that he was just going to sit back for 18 laps and then start to push it with seven laps to go. It didn't work out that way. He took it much earlier than that. And Dwight, I think he wanted this to be a little more honest and not so pedestrian. 429 for the first mile. Very easy for these guys up in the lead pack. Estrada sitting back in about fifth place. Kamoy Campbell on the inside from Arkansas for many needed points, hoping to place highly, if he can, is in fourth right now. He is the Jamaican record holder at 5,000 meters, is Kamoy. The team title is coming down to Texas A&M and Arkansas. And it's really Texas A&M's to lose at this point, and Henry Lillet finishing up high would be very, very helpful for the Aggies. Paul Chalimo, the junior from University of North Carolina, Greensboro, with the yellow vest on, is comfortably in third place right now. Well, we have a moment. We didn't get a chance to mention it in the 200 meters, and the Southern Cal does not have a runner here in the 5,000. But 50 years of coaching comes to an end when head coach Ron Alice, 19 years at USC, has announced his retirement from the program. He coached me at Long Beach State way back in the middle 70s, spent 17 years at Long Beach City College. I can't even count how many great athletes he's developed, Olympians, national champions, and he's been at the helm at USC for 19 years. Our congratulations and best wishes to Coach Ron Alice, who really took a personal interest in what happened with Bryshawn Nellum with a terrible, tragic shooting that he had to endure his freshman year, bringing him all the way back to the NCAA title and to being an Olympic athlete and Olympic medalist last summer in London. So best wishes, Coach Alice. It's a pleasure having you amongst the coaches at the NCAA level. Well, on cue, Lowey Lelang has definitely picked up the pace. Others are trying to hold it, but he ran his last two laps in two, uh, two minutes and seven seconds, so he has definitely started to torch everybody a little bit. Lelang in second place, holding on. Diego Estrada is in third. Kamoy Campbell in fourth. And Chalimo slipping back in fifth. With six laps remaining this 5,000 meters, let's catch you up on some action in the field. The women's shot put was taking place. And Tia Brooks from Oklahoma, a 2012 Olympian on her sixth and final attempt. The senior saved her best for last, her last throw as a collegian, and she made it her best. A meet record, 62 feet. One half inch. She missed the collegiate record by only three and a half inches. She is the collegiate record holder indoors. And she's got just a couple weeks to get ready to make the world championship team for the U.S. When the Nationals are at Drake, Brooks wins it at 62 feet a half inch. Brittany Smith of Illinois State, Felicia Johnson of Indiana State getting second and third. She was with Lewis. You tell us what it means to close out your career at Oklahoma with a national championship and record performance. Uh, it means everything. I've just so been so blessed to have the opportunity to throw for OU the past four years and to be able to have the meet record, it's good. I mean, I was going for the NCAA record, but the NCAA meet record will do. Finally, oftentimes shot putters are relegated to throwing somewhere outside the main venue. What does it mean to be right inside Hayward Field with this great crowd to really up soak up that energy as you throw? I mean, it's Track Town USA. My nerves were definitely flowing. Um, I just took, a, took it all in. Um, last time I was here was the Olympic trials, so to just be back here competing in front of some of the best fans in the world is just an amazing opportunity. Hey, Tia, congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, an Olympian, another Olympian that returned to school for their senior year in college. Back at the 5,000 meters, with just about five and a quarter laps remaining. And Lowey Lalang continuing to push the pace. Diego Estrada is right there. Boy Campbell is there. Paul Chalimo. That's that group of second, third, and fourth place runners. He's running 64. Now there's going to be four laps to go when they hit this straightaway, Dwight. And it's going to be he's running 65, 66s, 64 plus. 
And they have four laps to go. Estrada slipping into second place right now. Lowey looks to be in complete control, and the rest of the field strung out for about 150 meters or so behind him, even more. And he just looks so effortless, like he's just out on an easy jog. And he just continues to maintain about a 30 meter advantage over that group of three that's chasing him. I've had discussions with his coach, James Lee, a number of times on both Lagat and on Lelang, and he said at comparable ages, now Lowey is young in his early 20s, he said, and I coached at the same time Bernard Lagat at that age, and I'd say aerobically, Lelang is actually a little better than the great Bernard Lagat, aerobically similar ages. Well, coming up on three laps remaining, let's take a look back at the two great 100-meter races that we had yesterday. Plenty of drama in both. Gardner out well, as is Octavius Schreeman. Now here comes Ariel Scott. It's English Gardner being helped along by the Oregon crowd. It's going to be English Gardner. It's going to repeat. It's Gardner, Freeman, and Duncan. One, two, three. The time unofficially 10.96 seconds. The fastest time by a collegian this season. is Locke. Here comes Locke. It's going to be Dentarius Locke. No! With a late surge the last 10 meters, Charles Silman catches Dentarius Locke at the line. 9.89 seconds. Sensational time. The 100 meters always one of the signature events at any championship race as we get back to the 5,000 meters two laps remaining Lowie Lalang still maintaining about a 35 or 40 meter lead over Diego Estrada then Kamoy Campbell of Arkansas and Jamaica in third Paul Chalimo of University of North Carolina at Greensboro is fourth not much has changed just the gap between Lalang and Estrada that is Maverick Darling from Wisconsin trying to catch up to two, three, and four among the athletes there, slowly chipping away at them. Coming up to a lap and a quarter to go. Lang looking terrific, floating along easily. Good relationship shot there between second, third, and fourth. That is Estrada with a bandana on. From Salinas, California, is Estrada, who's come along, and, and it was a good California high school runner, but it's blossomed into a total national caliber. Uh, he had a chance to run for Mexico, did Estrada, at the Olympic Games, having dual citizenship in the United States. There was a mix-up in that, and long story short, he didn't get to the Olympic Games, but he was eligible for Mexico. On the final lap, and Lowy Lalang still maintaining now close to a 50 meter lap um, margin. As he's picked it up a little bit here in the final lap, he will be a double winner here at the NCAA Championships. It will be his seventh overall NCAA title during his career. Maverick Darling picking up the pace. has picked off Kamoy and he's in now in fourth place. And there goes Chalimo into second past Estrada with a big kick of his own in second, but it's all Lowy Lalang here today, all day. Seventh NCAA title, he still has a year of eligibility remaining at Arizona. Paul Chalimo is going to get second, and Diego Estrada third. Lalang 13-35-19, all by himself. Thirteen minutes, thirty-five seconds, went by three miles in about thirteen minutes and eight seconds. So Lowy Lalang, he may see him overseas this summer at the World Championships in Moscow. The way it's going, the women's title comes down to the four by four with all the teams in contention, Oregon, Arkansas, 
Illinois, and Kansas. Kansas